Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I am Bob Fowler and welcome to the program on this very first day of March 2022. Wow, can you believe it? We're already in the third month of 2022. I pray that you can look back and you can see God's faithfulness, His provision, His blessing, His Word being your reality in a very real life that you are living and experiencing with real challenges, real obstacles. But greater is He, 1 John 4, 4 declares to you, that is within you than He that is within the world. I'm telling you, you're a victor, not a victim. You're an overcomer, not someone who is underneath, but you are above every trial, test, and temptation. And Satan has been placed under your feet. Now, some would say, wow, if Satan is under my feet, how come he's giving me so much hell? Well, There are multiple reasons for that. He's going to attack the believer. He's going to use fear, doubt, discouragement, any weapon that is in his arsenal. But he's a toothless lion, the Bible says, that he goes about roaring as, not as, not being, but as. He is posing as a roaring lion. And you need to realize that you are a child of God. You you possess the kingdom of God within you and have been given the authority that in Jesus' name, you can speak to mountains, you can speak to sicknesses, you can speak to circumstances, and you can see them crumble at your feet. See yourself as a believer and not a doubter, as an overcomer and not someone who is a victim. And I just praise God that the Holy Spirit is here to enlighten us. (laughs) Have you ever had somebody say, let me enlighten you? (laughs) Well, the Holy Spirit is here to enlighten us to the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life in John 14, 6. No man comes to the Father but by me. And so you're a victor. God, through Christ, has positioned you that you now are seated with him in heavenly places through Christ Jesus, and now you are here to live out the rest of your life experiencing the blessing and the promise of God. Well, we're not talking about any of that, but that's good for me, and I believe it's good for you, and I pray that you took it as a word from the Lord. We're going to continue today talking about oneness. This is the third message. If you want to include, um, yeah, it's a third message, I think. Today's Tuesday, so yeah, we started this, Adis and I, on Friday. So if you didn't catch the program Friday night, you need to run back and uh, don't do it now, but you need to go back and you need to listen to that because it is there, there was so much truth and things that would encourage and strengthen you right where you are. Now, the opposite of oneness is division, obviously. Uh, how can two walk together unless they both agree? Amos 3.3 3 says, uh, and you, you can apply that walking wherever. If you're a Christian and you're beginning a business and you want it to be a Christian uh, influence, Christ motivated, uh, he is the CEO of your business, then you have to make certain choices. If you're going to go into partnership with somebody, is that person a believer? Uh, do they believe in tithing? Do they believe in the Word of God? Do they believe in, in expressing Christ even through cro- commerce? So there are choices that you have to make. When you're getting married, you don't want to be married to an unbeliever. You want to marry a believer. Doesn't matter how good looking she or he is. Doesn't matter how great the benefit may appear to be to you. You got to make a choice. Amen. You got to weed out the weeds. <laughs> and you want to make godly choices. Amen. Wait of the, wait on the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we've got to wait. There's a lot that takes place in our waiting. And as children of God, we are called to live our life as an expression as if Jesus were living that life through us right now, which that is the intention. 
It's Christ in me, the hope of glory, the life that I now live, I live through and by the faith in the Son of the living God. Of of the faith of the Son of the living God. Let's get into this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12, verses 13 through 20, and then verse 25. We'll probably just sit in this section of scripture. And we're going to talk about division among Christians. Now, this is kind of close to my heart because Adis and I have pastored three churches over 30 years. And so when I think of division among Christians, my mind particularly runs to the church, but it doesn't have to be exclusive to the church. Division among Christians, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether they're Jews or Greeks, whether they're slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, that's important that we remember that because the commonality that we all share, the oneness that we as believers are pressing toward and should be focused on is our unity in one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Now, that's important because we, while we are one, and you can, you can see this in a marriage covenant relationship, while we are one in Christ, we both have separate thoughts, separate ideas, live out our lives separately to please God, honor God. So while we are one in Christ in one spirit, we are two individuals. And the challenge for every marriage is to walk in unity and find that common ground, that commonality between our lives. Well, the same is true in the church or the body of Christ as a whole. The body is not one member, but many. If the foot... Now, Paul here, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, starts using our own body as an illustration of how the body of Christ should work, okay? Should is the operative word. If the foot, now think of your foot now. If your foot should say, because I'm not the hand, now I would stick my foot up and show you my foot to use a comparison, but I'm not that flexible. (laughs) But you get the idea. (laughs) If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not the body? Well, of course it is. Your foot is a part of your body. You have one body, physically speaking, that is made up of many members, your feet, your hands. And so he's using this literal illustration to bring home a spiritual point. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear, your ear, should say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? But now God has set the members, each one of them, God has. Now, this is important. Whatever your role or function is in the body, you should not gripe or complain about it because God has put you in the body with specific gifts, talents, thoughts, things that you can bring to the table God is the one, though, who has made that choice of what you are, who you are, and what you're going to bring to the table. We should celebrate the fact that God has even considered us to be a part of the body. Now, what is the body? The body is made up of every single person who has ever called upon the name of the Lord. Now, In that mix, you've got everything from Pentecostals, tongue-talking people, 
people that believe the word, apply the word, and believe that it's literal for today, of which I are one. And you got Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, some Catholics, you got that don't adhere to, to that their salvation is rooted in the performance of rituals, but their salvation is based upon their acceptance of Christ. You, you, you've got some that believe in speaking in tongues. You got others that don't. I know that rubs some tongue talking people the wrong way, but listen, you don't have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues to be a child of God and to be placed into the body of Christ and be a member of the body. You don't have to speak in tongues to go to heaven. Now, speaking in tongues makes this life on earth a little bit easier. It's another weapon. It's another privilege. It's another act of God giving us intimacy and relationship with him. But it is not a necessity for someone to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues to go to heaven. Now, like it or lump it, that's just a fact. You're saved by acceptance of what Christ has done upon the cross, not of works, not of performance, but simply by faith, receiving, accepting what Jesus did as the finished work of what was needed and necessary for me as a person to be a member of the body of Christ, to be a child of God. I know that bothers some people. There is no yeah buts in salvation. Have you accepted what Jesus has done upon the cross as your only source of salvation in order for you to go to heaven, in order for you to have a relationship with God? Yes, you're born again. You're a child of God. You're a member of the body of Christ. You're necessary. You're needful. You bring gifts and talents to the table that are important. Does the eye say to the ear, I have no need of you? Think of yourself immediately losing your hearing. How radical would your life, rad, what type of radical difference would that bring in your life if you couldn't hear, if you couldn't see, if you couldn't smell, if you couldn't taste? If that was removed from you, it would impact your life. We all, even though we're separate, we are one under the being part of the body. Everywhere I go, my ear goes. Everywhere I travel, my nose travels. Everywhere I travel, my hand. We all go together. Now, I don't eat with my nose. I may smell the food, but I don't eat with my nose. I eat with my mouth. And I don't use my feet to hold my fork. I use my hand. Yeah, I know there are people that are born without arms and hands and they have that, I know, I know, they have that capability, but just stay focused with me for just a moment. We all travel together in one body and are available for whatever comes up. If I need my ears, my eyes, my nose, my hands, my feet, I got them right there with me. Well, Paul has brought that to a spiritual application of who we are and how important we are in the body of Christ because he was dealing with division and complaining and murmuring in the church. But now God has set the members, each of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? I just illustrated that. But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another, just one for another. Now, schism here means a split or gap or division. Just like Paul was looking at the early church and saying, wait a minute, you cannot say to this person, I have no need of you, 
because God has placed them in the body for a specific reason and a specific purpose. And just because you think that individual is unimportant does not mean that God says that person is unimportant. You see, once you discover that someone is a child of God, you need to walk in honor to them. You need to walk in reverence to God that he has placed that person in the body for a specific purpose. Now, as the body of Christ as a whole, when you see people and you look at people and people come in all shapes, sizes, personalities, but yet they have said yes to Jesus, you should walk in honor to them, realizing that God has put them in the body and has brought them into the kingdom for such a time as this, no matter who they are. Every believer is a member of the body of Christ. They may be an eye, they may be an ear, they may be a nose, they may be a foot, they may be a hand, they may be a finger, they may be a toe, but they are, listen, there's not one part of your body. If you were to miss a finger, you would miss that finger. If you, if you were to lose a toe, you would miss that toe. It would impact your entire body. If you lost the sense of smell, it would impact your entire life. And so we should never, ever be divided because we think this person is unimportant or that person is not necessary. Those types of thought patterns should be removed from our thinking. We should never overlook somebody and call them insignificant and unimportant. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost just pulling this out of me today because someone is going to recognize that they have done that, that they have looked at somebody and, oh Lord, there they are again. Well, I don't really need them. I wish they would leave. No, if a person is a child of God, somewhere, somehow, we've got to recognize and take ownership of the fact that they are a member of the body. Now, it's something different if someone is bringing confusion and strife and division. That's another issue. But if that's not the case, that individual, I don't care if maybe their place in the body at that moment is sweeping up the floor, straightening up chairs, handing out flyers, standing at the door greeting, whatever it may be, it's up to a leader in a church to recognize Lord, show me what part of the body they are so I can give them the right assignment. I want to be tender toward them, open toward them, because you brought them to me, and it is my job to find out where they fit in the body or where they don't. There have been issues like that. You got somebody that they should be standing at the door greeting, but they want to be preaching. And it takes a sensitive man or woman of God to guide them, not to manipulate them, to get rid of them or hide them, but to be tender in their heart to say, Lord, show me where this person... I remember years ago when a young man came down to the altar and we were having a time of prayer. And he came down and he was different. He was... He was someone that would require special attention. And I remember tenderly, gently kneeling beside him, putting my arm over his shoulder and just praying with him and lingering, being patient and tender. And Lord, bless this young man. Lead this young man. Use this young man. Show us where this young man fits in this local body of the church, which is a part of the overall body of Christ. Help me to work with him. Help me to, and and the Holy Spirit did just that. You know, it takes time by leaders 
to be sensitive and tender and not discard people. Oh, they don't make a certain amount of money. They don't deserve my attention. Listen, that's dangerous. Now you're now you are are falling under the reprimand of God. <laughs> Yeah, when you start offending these little ones, you're offending their father. And listen, any father here on earth worth his salt, you mess with his children, any of them, even the ones that don't behave correctly, you're in danger of being reprimanded severely and sharply. So as leaders, we should be extremely tender and open to the people that God brings into our local churches, our local assemblies, ministries, and we should be tender and be, ask, be asking the Holy Spirit, where does this person fit in? But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body, that there should be no division, there should be no split, there should be no gap among you. I'm going to stop right there, and I know we've talked a lot about church, but listen, you're going to be out in the street, you're going to be out into the community talking to people, and once you find out that they are a believer, you need to remember, they have been plugged in and made part of the body of Christ. It's walking in oneness, but it's also understanding who we are. If someone is a believer, they are your brother and your sister in the Lord. Not greater than or less than you, all equal ground at the foot of the cross. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that we're one in you. The commonality that we all share is the fact that we serve one God, We've been washed by one blood. We've been filled by one spirit and we are one body. I pray that you would help us to remind ourselves and to remember the fact that we are one in you. Our husband and our wife are not just our husband and our wife. They're our brother and our sister in the Lord if they are believers. Our children they are not just our sons, not just our daughters, but if they've received you, they are our brothers and our sisters in the Lord. Help us to see life differently, Lord, through the prism of the blood and what that blood has produced in all of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I pray the program has been a blessing to you, a source of encouragement and a reminder of who you are and whose you are. No matter what role you fulfill in the body, embrace it, take ownership of it, and be grateful and thankful that God has placed you in the body as he has pleased. Hey, if this program has been a blessing to you or any of the other programs, please share them with your friends on your social media platforms. Come on, let's get the good news of a life without fear out to everyone into the highways, the byways, and beyond. If you have not gone to our YouTube channel, I pray you do at Faith is the Victory Fellowship. YouTube. You're going to find all of our programs, including this one there. And also, while you're there, subscribe. You can click that little bell. And every time we place or submit something on that platform, you will be notified. Last but not least, please go into the description section immediately after watching this program. And there, you're going to find several safe, simple, and secure ways in which you can be a blessing financially to the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Come on, I want to encourage you. So into the ministry, if you have not yet given, but yet these programs have been a source of encouragement to you, I want to ask you, go before the Lord and say, Father, what should I invest into this ministry? I want to say thank you in advance for you doing that. Well, until tomorrow, right back here live at Faith is the Victory Fellowship 
Facebook. I will be back here tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, and we're going to continue this message on oneness. But until then, I want to tell you that I love you, God loves you, and as always, my friend, never ever forget, He is faithful.